Dom John VI, nicknamed the Clement, was King of the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil and the Algarves from 1816 to 1822, and, although de facto the United Kingdom over which he ruled ceased to exist, he remained so de jure from 1822 to 1825, after the recognition of Brazilian independence under the 1825 Treaty of Rio de Janeiro. He continued as King of Portugal and the Algarves until his death in 1826. Under the said treaty he also became titular Emperor of Brazil for life, while his son, Emperor Pedro I, was both de facto and de jure the monarch of the newly independent country. Born in Lisbon in 1767, the son of Peter III of Portugal and Queen Maria I, he was originally an Infante of Portugal, and only became heir to the throne when his older brother, José, Prince of Brazil, died in 1788, of smallpox, at the age of 27. Before his accession to the Portuguese throne, John VI bore the titles of Duke of Braganza and Duke of Bejar, as well as the title of Prince of Brazil. He served from 1799 as Prince Regent of Portugal due to the mental illness of his mother, the Queen. Eventually, he succeeded his mother as monarch of the Portuguese Empire, with no real change in his authority since, as Regent. He already possessed absolute powers. One of the last representatives of absolutism, he lived during a turbulent period, his reign never saw a lasting peace. Throughout his period as regent and later king, such major powers as Kingdom of Spain, Kingdom of France and its later successor the First French Empire and Great Britain continually intervened in Portuguese affairs forced to flee to South America across the Atlantic Ocean into Brazil when troops of the Emperor Napoleon I invaded Portugal. He found himself faced there with liberal revolts that reflected similar events in the metropolis. He was compelled to return to Europe amid new conflicts. His marriage was no less conflictual, as his wife, Carla Tajo Aquina of Spain, repeatedly conspired against her husband in favor of personal interests or those of her native Spain. He lost Brazil when his son Pedro declared independence, and his other son Miguel led a rebellion that sought to depose him. According to recent scholarly research, his death may well have been caused by arsenic poisoning. Notwithstanding these tribulations he left a lasting mark, especially in Brazil, creating numerous institutions and services that laid a foundation for national autonomy and is considered by many researchers the true mastermind of the modern Brazilian state. Still, he has been widely viewed as a cartoonish figure in Portuguese Brazilian history, being accused of laziness, lack of political acumen and constant indecision, and often portrayed as physically grotesque. Early life, João Maria José Francisco Xavier de Paula Luis Antonio Domingos Rafael was born 13 May 1767, during the reign of his grandfather, Joseph I of Portugal, the second son of the future Queen Maria I and her husband, the future King Peter III. At the time of John's birth they were, respectively, Princess of Brazil and Infante of Portugal. He was ten years old when his grandfather died and his mother ascended to the throne as Queen Maria I of Portugal. His childhood and youth were lived quietly, as he was a mere Infante, in the shadow of his elder brother José. Prince of Brazil and 14th Duke of Braganza, the primogenitor and heir apparent to the throne. Folklore has John as a rather uncultured youth, but according to George Pedreira e Costa, he received as rigorous an education as José. Still, a French ambassador of the time painted him in unfavorable colors, seeing him as hesitant and dim. The record of this period of his life is too vague for historians to form any definitive picture. According to tradition, his tutors in arts and sciences included fathers Manuel do Senacolo, Antonio Dominguez do Paco and Miguel Franzini. His music masters were the organist João Cordeiro da Silva and the composer João Sousa de Carvalho and his riding instructor staff Sergeant Carlos Antonio Ferreira Monti.
Little is known of the substance of his education. He surely received instruction in religion, law, French, and etiquette, and would presumably have learned history through reading the works of Duarte Nunes de Leo and João de Barros. Marriage and succession in 1785, Enrique de Manises, third Marquis of Luricle, arranged a marriage between John and the Infanta Carlotagio Aquina of Spain, daughter of King Charles IV of Spain and Queen Consort Maria Luisa of Parma, like him a junior member of a royal family. Fearing a new Iberian Union, some in the Portuguese court viewed the marriage to a Spanish Infanta unfavorably. She endured four days of testing by the Portuguese ambassadors before the marriage pact was confirmed. Because John and Carlotta Tar were related, and because of the bride's youth, who was only ten at the time, the marriage required a papal dispensation. After being confirmed, the marriage capitulation was signed in the throne room of the Spanish court. With great pomp and with the participation of both kingdoms, followed immediately by a proxy marriage. The marriage was consummated five years later. The Infanta was received at the Ducal Palace of Vila Vicosa at the beginning of May 1785, and on 9 June 1785 the couple received a nuptial benediction at the Palace Chapel. At the same time, John's sister Infanta Mariana Victoria was married to Infante Gabriel, also of the Spanish royal family. An assiduous correspondence between John and Mariana at that time reveals that the absence of his sister weighed upon him in comparing her to his young wife, he wrote. She is very smart and has a lot of judgment, whereas you have rather little, and I like her a lot. But for all that I cannot love her equally, John's young bride was little given to docility, requiring at times the intervention of Queen Maria herself. Furthermore, the difference in their ages made him uncomfortable and anxious. Because Carlotta was so young, the marriage had not been consummated, and John wrote, Here's to the arrival of the time when I shall play a lot with the Infanta. The way these things go, I think six years from now. Better that she be a bit more grown up than when she came. The consummation waited until the 5th of April 1790. In 1793, Carlotta gave birth to the first of nine children, Teresa, Princess of Byra. By that time, his hitherto relatively quiet life had been turned upside down by the death on the 11th of September 1788 of his older brother Dom Jose, which left John as the heir apparent to the throne with the titles of Prince of Brazil and 15th Duke of Braganza. Great hopes had ridden on Dom Jose, who was associated with the progressive ideas of the Enlightenment. Criticized by the clergy, he appeared to have been inclined toward the anti-clerical policies of the Marquis of Pombal. John, in contrast, was well known for his religiosity and for favoring absolutism. The crisis of succession was aggravated with the death soon after of Ignacio de São Catano, Archbishop of Thessalonica, the Queen's confessor and a powerful political figure, who had influenced a controversial choice of Maria's ministers that favored John but not without encountering strong opposition from important Fidalgos who had ambitions for those posts. Furthermore, the year after these deaths, John was so ill that his own survival was uncertain. He recovered, but in 1791 he again fell ill, bleeding from the mouth and intestines. According to notes left by the chaplain of the Marquis of Marialva, who added that his spirit was always depressed. This created a tense climate and uncertainty about his future reign. 